A loving attention to detail doesn't quite seem to describe the craft that you'll experience if you've ever seen Star Citizen ships up close and personal. The cumulative effect of which creates a sense of immersion that is not present in many games out there today, even finished ones. And so it should come as no surprise then that some backers go the extra mile, picking themselves up a stick, throttle, and set of pedals to fly the ships with in a sort of simulated experience. Hey guys, I'm Morphologist and recently Monster Tech, a mount manufacturer, reached out to me about trying out some of their products. I loved the offer, but unfortunately at the time I actually didn't own a throttle and stick set up myself. So I turned them down. And then something strange happened. They came back to me with an offer I couldn't refuse. They were going to send me out not only the mounts, but a set of T16000 sticks from Thrustmaster along with a throttle. And that was just too darn generous, and better yet, with no strings attached. Didn't have to make a video or even mention the fact that this happened. But of course, seeing as how they were so generous, and I'm pretty sure that this was their game, I am creating a video on it, because it is such a cool thing to have experienced. It really has transformed my connection with the game making me feel more connected with the ship, and creating an overall more enjoyable experience. And so I wanted to take this opportunity to create a video to share with you how this mount system works, and then my overall experience with it, so maybe if you're thinking about getting a set of sticks yourself, whether or not it's worth it. And if by the end you found this video enjoyable or informative, and you think I deserve it, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, it really helps me grow the channel. So one of the problems for me and why I've been hesitant about actually getting a HOTAS set up is that I don't have a lot of desk space. I've got two PCs, two mouse and keyboards on my setup because I do a lot of streaming. And so when Monster Tech talked to me about a mount that they had that they wanted to send out to me uh, being chair mounted, I was really intrigued. So the cool thing about these things is that they actually fold away to the side when I don't want to use them. But when I'm ready to use my setup, I can actually fold them back into place and lock them with a really cool swivel mount adapter. And so that makes it really viable for me to have the setup and still be able to do other things. The construction of the mounts themselves are pretty solid. I believe it's a mix of steel and aluminum. The brackets themselves are aluminum, this bar right here. And then that actually all attaches to a plate that goes in between your seat and your actual base. And this mount, as I understand it, is universal for most chairs. I think they've got a list on their website if you're interested. But the question then remains, is it worth it? should you get yourself a dual stick or a stick and throttle setup. Because even these entry-level Thrustmaster T16000s are not cheap. They go for about 130 bucks on Amazon last I saw them, and then you add in the mounts and you've spent quite a bit of cash. Well, I'm happy to report that the new flight system in 310 has made the flight experience a heck of a lot better. Even if you're flying with mouse and keyboard like I used to, you're going to enjoy it a lot more, especially with the new targeting system. More than that, though, is the changes to fixed weapons. That has made it so that fixed weapons have a bit of a soft lock if you get really close to the crosshair. This is at a net effect of making fixed weapons all the more useful in actual PvP combat, but even better than that is that now people who use sticks will have a good chance to compete with mouse and keyboard users, because mouse and keyboard is a bit more precise. You're able to get your crosshair directly on that little pip to get those registered hits. So then you might be wondering if that's the case, then what's the point of using the stick and throttle setup other than the immersion? Well, in my experience from having played this past weekend with this setup, I've been able to pull off maneuvers that I could never have done with a mouse and keyboard. And I think what it comes down to is that the sticks that I'm using are allowing me to vary my thrust in multiple directions simultaneously, something that I can't physically do on a keyboard setup. Furthermore, I'm able to very gradually roll my ship, something that's not possible with a mouse and keyboard either because it's either on or off for full maximum roll. This, I think, in reflection has allowed me to track targets better in dogfights, which is really the game, isn't it? If you're in a dogfight with another player or a pretty skilled AI, then you want to keep that guy in your crosshairs. You don't want to ever let him get out of there because if you do and he gets behind you, well, he might 
let loose a missile at you or get those very powerful fixed weapons trained directly on your pip. But I want to come back to the actual experience again, because I know for some people it's about whether or not you have an advantage, but really you cannot overlook just how much more enjoyable it can become with a actual HOTAS or HOSAS setup like what I have here. There's a physicality to the experience that just isn't present with the mouse and keyboard that gets you into it. It's, you know, if I had to equate it to something, maybe it's kind of like playing an instrument. You have to use both of your hands simultaneously in a way that is both artful and skilled. And so when you secure victory for yourself in either the PU against AI or in a bounty hunting mission or for your pirate against another player, taking their load, for example, it is way more satisfying to get that kill. But even outside of combat, say for example weaving in and out of the buildings at New Babbage, has now too become even more enjoyable. You can now really feel the wind effects, the atmospheric effects on your ship. Now, there's not force feedback per se, but you just, like I said, have more connection to the ship through the stick and throttle or dual stick setup like what I'm using. And I also have the sense that I have a better feel for the differences between ships now with this setup, much more so than I ever did before. The Gladius feels so much more distinctly different than, say for example, the car to wall which I'm flying right now to film that Gladius in. So then you might be wondering what about the time to learn how to use these sticks? How long did it take me to really get a handle on changing from mouse to keyboard to a dual stick setup? I have to say that initially it was really clumsy. I had no idea what I was doing, but as they say, practice makes perfect, and now I think I got it down to the point where I might be able to PvP somebody and come out on top. And I'm sure that confidence will grow with time. A bigger headache though was actually setting up the sticks configurations. Star Citizen has some built-in defaults for the sticks, but I would say that they're a far cry from something that I personally felt was usable. Especially if you go beyond one joystick. If you're using two like what I'm doing, you are going to have to spend some time creating a profile for yourself. Luckily Star Citizen also has a way to copy pasta the XML file that holds all those configurations and send them to other people, so if you know somebody who has a T16000 set up like yours, maybe you can have them send uh, their setup to you, their, their configuration file, and save yourself a little bit of a headache of trying to set it up for yourself. But for me, I actually found some enjoyment in spending time figuring out what worked better, and I really do think I've got it down now. So then what I think it comes down to is whether or not you really enjoy flying ships around in Star Citizen. For some of you, I'm sure you like the FPS combat side of things, and maybe ships are just a means to get from point A to point B. But for others, flying ships may be the highlight of your day when you hop into a session of Star Citizen. And for those people, I think that you might want to give sticks a second look if you've ever thought about them before. Because for me, I really have thoroughly enjoyed this. Now hopefully I don't sound like too much of a massive shill here when I say that if you do decide to go with sticks, I would definitely take a look at the Monster Tech mounts. The chair mount solution is way more comfortable in my experience than putting them on your desk. I used to have an old Logitech 3D uh, joystick that I would use directly on my desk and that was okay. I could do it, but sometimes that stick would move around and it would kind of mess up my movement. In the end though, you really need neither the mounts nor the sticks themselves to enjoy flying in Star Citizen. And in fact, like I said earlier, mouse and keyboard is more accurate than a stick. But is it more enjoyable? Hmm, I would say sticks are more enjoyable, but I'll leave that up for you to decide. If you guys are interested in either the sticks or the mounts, I'll have a link in the description below for you guys to check out. I've been Morphologist, thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you found this video informative, and if you did, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. See you guys next time.